actually owns this land? Who owns that garden right there? That big garden that we just broke up? Who owns these sheep and these pig, these cattle? Who owns that lake right there? What about the trees? What about the air? Who owns it? Well, I bought the land, I bought the animals, it's all deeded to me. But do I have the right to utilize it the way I want to utilize it? Today we're gonna discuss just that. That, that overreach is happening and there's a state that is taking those rights away from its people. And it's gonna periodically go throughout each state because there's a power grab for what we own. Let's talk about it today because it impacts every one of you. Every one of you. Let's jump into it. Today's video starts right now. About to see the world in action, what we can be like with no distractions. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. It is a beautiful, beautiful sunrise over the farm this morning. And a farm that I typically would say I own, but when we start hearing stories like this that we're going to be talking about today, yeah, I wonder sometimes, do we actually own the things that we've paid for? We've talked about this before with taxes and regulation. It's a, it's a, it's a slippery slope. It shouldn't be so slippery. Before we jump into it, if you are new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up. That sure does help us and it means the world to me that you support us. Please comment below and tell us what you think about this video. Is this too much overreach or is it just how we're supposed to live? We're supposed to just let the government know everything. You tell me. So today we're going to be talking about Oregon. Oregon just came out with a new law that talks about water rights. And I know some of you people in the West and Midwest, y'all deal with water rights a lot more than people like us. I mean, it's raining inches uh, every few days here. So we get a lot of waters and when we don't, that's a crazy thing, but we still have a very humid, green area, lush area. So water rights have not been pushed on us like it has you. But let's talk about Oregon. Oregon enforces its water use requirements. Small farms may face major and dire consequences. And it goes through a story about a lady who has pretty much a market garden and a homestead. And now they're taking some of the rights of just growing her own food away. Now, here's the thing. When, when we have overreach, they always spin it and it, it's good to help us and secure uh, our future. All the while, what they're doing is actually hindering you and restricting the benefits of having a free America. The story goes on and says, for seven years, this lady has uh, used a water well to grow her own vegetables, which are sold at a local farmer's market, almost like a farmer's garden or a market garden uh, to sell crops, how she makes her money. I like the convenience store. However, a lot of people like eating fresh food. However, everything changed last September and now you're starting to see the effects of it now. Oregon Water Resource Department put in notifications that you cannot irrigate certain areas and you cannot use them without water right. So now the question is, is growing food illegal? If they own the rights to the water, now it's not your water, even though it's on your land, even though it's running under everyone, it should be public action, it should be free for everybody. But now they're saying, wait, no, this is government rights. This is our, our water. You either have to pay extra fees to run this water or it's illegal for you to grow your own food. And I, I get this all the time. Colby, that is, that's preposterous. There, no one's going to take your rights away from growing a garden. They didn't have to take your right to grow a garden. They took the water that feeds the garden away. See, that's what we're so good at. It didn't take government telling you to not go out in 2020. It actually did not tell them to lock down. It shut down everything else and influenced everyone to where it was just natural. Everybody had to shut down because all these big businesses that believe and are cowtailing to the government, they said, well, hey, work from home. So you were automatically locked down. The same situation here. If you can't grow your own food, you are subservient to a government or subservient to a higher person up the food chain. You have freedom. You have freedom to grow all the food you want to grow. However, we own the rights to the water. However, you have to pay property tax an extra fee since you're trying to go commercially and grow that crop. So you've got to pay us some money. Well, therefore, you can grow crops, but there's stipulations. So you see how that works. I think about it with the cattle situation that just took place uh, with this new bill. See, in the omnibus bill, cattle tracking was put in there. Cattle tracking. 
meaning they know where that livestock is at all times. That will be something you see, especially in these liberal areas. Now, these conservative states hopefully will push against it, but if we start tracking our cattle, that means they know your gardens. They know where the water needs to be placed because they see that and they can pull the water rights and therefore you may not can grow gardens. Well, also, what about, what about livestock? If they start tracking livestock, then they know your food source. This year in Mississippi, we've not had a tagging system for um, hunting, deer hunting. I hate tagging systems. I think it's a crock. It's amazing that the government thinks they own the deer uh, and all the livestock and all the water rights. That, that's the world we live in. We, basically, we live in a very controlled society. But now they're saying, well, just so we can manage the deer population to make sure they're here for years to come. They didn't need us to make sure they were here for years to come. They've been here for the last 2,000 years or 4,000 years. They, they don't need us to monitor their habitats and their, their natural breeding cycles. They're smart. They're animals. God gave them wisdom. So therefore, now we have to tag these deer. So guess what? If your deer if your deer are tagged, which a lot of states are already doing that, that means they know everything about what your food system is. They know every every animal that you're consuming. They know every vegetable that you're taking in, either from a grocery store because you can't grow your gardens anymore, so they know what you're buying. They know that because you got a digital footprint as well. So do you see how those those domino effects af affect you? And all it was was a water bill right. They wrote one water right bill that will affect farmers and growers and gardens to where your garden now may be illegal because you can't get water to it. It didn't take them telling you they could, you couldn't grow food. It took them saying, well, on the rights to the water. So if you want water for it, you have to pay extra fees. If you want to grow gardens, then you got to have licensures. If you're wanting to have those cows, then they need to be tracked. Do you see how that starts as a domino effect? It did not take them making it illegal to own a garden or own a cow. They just made you jump through several hoops and boundaries and hurdles to get there. That is what the sleight of hand is. That's what the puppet master does. It, they make us believe that it, we have these freedoms all the while. And now back to the land. This land has a deed on it. I own it. It's got my name on it. But if I don't go every year and pay property tax on it, it's not my land. It could be anyone's for the tax price. It could be the government's because they can auction it off. Even though I bought it, even though I paid for it through all the hard work I've done, the blood, sweat, and tears to get it off, the, sweat, the stress and anxiety, and then all of a sudden, if I, all, if I can't pay my own property tax, which is unbelievable that we have a property tax yearly, I think that is the biggest load of manure there is that someone's charging me property tax for things I don't even get. I get no benefits from my county or city or anything. I have my own well, my own sewer system. I have literally, I've, I've, got, I've put my own roads in. They're not picking my trash up. So what are they actually doing for me? Nothing. What, they say roads and bridges? I mean, don't give me that. That's, that's infrastructure and all you hear is roads and bridges and education. We don't even partake in the education that we pay for. I digress because I'm a homeschooler. But anyways, what I'm saying is if we don't pay the property tax, then do we actually own the land? So now what we've come to figure out in this, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of filming this video is that we have no rights to own land. We have no rights to grow gardens. We have no rights to harvest animals or deer that is naturally in the woods. We have no rights to take water from lakes and ponds and streams to utilize. We can't even catch water in some states because the government owns it all. And you have to have rights to utilize it. Isn't that amazing? We elect these people to go up there and set policies and precedents for us. Do you realize that? We have elected these people to go full time up to Washington and to your state capitals to ultimately put you in more penalization for regulation that you are not abiding to. Look at the lady in Oregon. If you, if you really want to look at, go and look in detail on some of these organ stories where it's almost illegal to grow food, not because they made it illegal to grow food, because they've made you have to jump through hurdles to get the water to grow the food, to grow the animals. They found the secret. It's upstream. You, you can't play in the, the creek down here and the river down here if they dam the water up upstream. 
It's the same situation we're seeing here. The more, the more power we give our elected bureaucrats, the more power we give to these three-letter agencies that are not elected, the more power we give to our electors to all of a sudden represent us and actually not represent us but special interests, the more we're, we're damming up our own waterways to where we can't get that flow of freedom down. And now we're looking at if all of a sudden my income goes away, I've bought this land, I've paid for this land, paid the interest on this land, but if I can't pay the simple property tax each year, someone else could take it out from under me. I can't divert that water right there. Now, Mississippi, we still can, but say there are several states that they can't take up and build a pond right there. They can't catch water off a building for, for quote unquote free water. It's illegal. So is it illegal to grow a garden? Is it illegal for water catchment? Is it illegal to raise your family on sustainable options pretty much because they've put the stipulations the regulations and the law that hurts you in the other ways or they're just gonna make it so expensive on you where you can't afford it it's kind of like the meat I, I've heard this uh, we grow cattle you know that and uh, there's a story out that says well you know 80% of people are not gonna buy these, uh, this fake meat. Well, when hamburger meat is 10 to 12 to $15 a, a pound or more, and they have this quote unquote impossible meat, this new lab grown meat that's $2.50, $4.50, $5, when you see it's half price, you're going to see more people move to it. They're going to say, man, I wanted the grill, but I just cannot afford that burger. Let's just try this out. Let's just try it. And that's how it starts. It's a slow bleed to where we realize our freedoms are slowly being taken away from us, all because of all because of manipulation, all because of regulation, and all because the things that sometimes we can't see. It does not take them saying you can't grow a garden, but they can stop you growing a garden if they control the water. They can't tell you you can't right, have rights to bear arms to harvest animals but then they can make it so hard and have so much permits to where you either have the right to bear arms, but then there's nothing to, to harvest because they've made it illegal to hunt this time of year, these animals, this time. You can't hunt this because we're managing them because for some reason deer, even though they've lived for 4,000 years, they cannot manage their self anymore, so you've got to manage them. Isn't that funny? It's unbelievable. Well, the sun is coming out and I've got to get to work on my gardens, but do you get what I'm saying? The fact that we've allowed this to take place and keep taking place, we have to learn to get the pendulum swinging back. We have to press our electors. We have to press our representatives. If they cannot do that, then they do not need to be in office. If they cannot answer you with a yes or no, then you don't need to vote for them. They need to be out of office. If we don't start looking at changing some things, America as we know it, will not be the country that we wanted it to be for our kids to grow up in. No one should care if you're growing your own food, you're growing your own lettuce, you're growing your own cow. It should be no one's business but your own. And sadly, the government's made it their business. Give me your thoughts. Let me know what you think below. Check out this Oregon story because I think it's going to open a lot of people's eyes to see it may be illegal to grow gardens. But they're smart and they can write the policy to make you believe that, oh no, it's okay, you can grow as much garden as you want. Well, but then they control the water. Thank you guys for watching. God bless. Happy homestead, y'all.